All right. Welcome, everyone, to a new episode of the Roscoe's Wetsuit Podcast. I've got a very special guest on the show today. We have Andrew Alleman. Andrew is a podcasting expert and founder of podcastguests.com. The service is used by over 20,000 people to both find guests for podcasts and for experts to get booked on podcasts. Andrew, uh, welcome to the show. I'm really excited to, to kind of learn from your expertise as far as with podcasting and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, share that with our listeners along with maybe some of my own uh, sort of selfish wishes to, to learn more about podcasting. Hey, so. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do awesome. it. Awesome. Well, let's start off. Tell me, tell me a little, how did you originally get into what, what got you interested in just this whole area of podcasting and then also what inspired you to create podcast guests? So I got into podcasting, I guess if we go back a little bit in 2005, I started a, a blog that's kind of like a, um, let's just call it a trade publication for the domain name industry. So it covers like what companies like GoDaddy and uh, Wix are doing. And the publication is great, still going strong, but about well, almost six years ago now, you know, podcasts were becoming more and more popular. And I, I wanted a, a longer format type of, of media to use and to, to really get in depth with people. Most of my blog posts are fairly short and newsy, but I wanted an opportunity to sit down with people for a half an hour, to talk to them about a topic in depth. And so that's where the podcast came along. And it's obviously a very niche topic. It's not something like the Joe Rogan show where you're going to get millions of listeners, uh, but it's been, I'm up to 295 episodes. I'm recording 296 today. And so it's right. been going strong. It's a, it's a weekly show. So going strong now for about six years. And one thing, one struggle I had is about a year into doing a podcast. So about 50 episodes in, and I said, wow, I've, I've really tapped my Rolodex. I've, I've talked to all these people. I've interviewed all these people that I know from the industry, uh, but I want to get new people that people haven't heard of and that I haven't necessarily heard of and, and talked with. And so I wanted to find an easy way to find interesting people that could talk about domain names or the domain name business. And I went out and looked for a, a way to find these people, but there wasn't really something out there. There are lots of agencies that will help you book and, and they charge a lot as they should because they're kind of a do it, do it for me model where they go out and they do all the cold calling and emails to try to find guests for you. Uh, but I wanted something more of a platform that I could use self-service and then other people could use as well. And that's where the idea behind podcastguests.com came about. Interesting. So did it start off, were you just kind of sharing it with the idea or the website with your audience? And then people, um, more and more people ended up kind of getting listed on the, the directory. How did that sort of progression yeah. take place? Yeah. So at, at first, what I did was I reached out to a couple hundred podcasters and said, hey, I'm starting this thing. I'm having this challenge. I imagine you are too. Let's, let's see what we can do. And so after I got a couple hundred podcasters subscribed, we started uh, to, to the email, to the weekly email. I sent out my first list. And, and the way it works is I send out a list of podcasts each week that are looking for guests and exactly what they're looking for. And then as a, an expert in that field, you can pitch them essentially. You can say, hey, I want to be on your show. This is why. And so immediately off the bat, it started working. People, you know, podcasters are also experts that want to be on other shows. So I had a, a group there that could work together. Uh, started working immediately. It grew. We grew to thousands of users. And then as I started looking into, okay, I'm putting lots of money into this on advertising and such. How can I monetize it? Uh, a lot of the experts came and said, you know, I, I like a way to get booked on more shows. It's great that you're sending out this list each week and I can pitch myself, but is there any way that I can pay a little bit of money uh, instead of using the service for free and having podcasters come to me? And that was the idea behind the directory, which is now probably a few years old. And that is that experts can pay a small monthly fee and they will be in this directory and now podcasters can come to them. So not only will we 
feature your podcast, the Roscoe's Wetsuit Podcast, in our newsletter for free. Uh, but as a podcaster, you can also find experts immediately in this directory that you like. And as you know, you can see their one sheet, you can read all about them, you can read about what they'll do to help you promote your show, that sort of thing. And then it's just very easy to invite them onto your podcast. Right on. Well, Andrew, I'm curious because, you know, you probably have listened to, you know, tons of different podcasts by now, talked to lots of different hosts. I'm curious, you know, what, what are you, what do you think the sort of defining characteristics of a great show, a great podcast are? Yeah, it's a good question. And I, I guess my first, first thing that comes to mind is there's no formula. There's no one size fits all. And I think a lot of podcasters come into it and they're like, I want to be exactly like this show or like this show. And I'm going to have the same type of guests, the same format. I'm going to have the same type of monetization. I'm going to sell ads or, or some other form of monetization. And I think that's a mistake. I, I think everyone should look at podcasting from a, a different perspective and you should really go into it saying, what do I want to get out of it? If your goal is to become this insanely popular podcast with hundreds of thousands of downloads each week that sells ads, I hate to break it to you, but odds are that that's just not going to happen. That's, uh, there are only a few podcasts that are, are able to do that. The median number of downloads for a podcast is fewer than 200. So much like blogs, there's a very long, long tail when it comes to podcasting. And so I would go into it with your, with your eyes wide open as far as that's concerned and, and think about what you want to get out of it. For a lot of podcasters, it's, yes, I want to create a podcast that makes money, which, okay, that makes a lot of sense. I know a, a lot of us do things for that, but I would think about how you're going to make that money if that's your goal. And the idea of just selling ads might not be the way to go there. I would make sure that it's a topic you're passionate about as well. As you know, podcasting is a lot of work and we see a lot of podcasts start and stop before they even get to 10 episodes. In fact, when we feature podcasts in our newsletter, we make sure that they have at least 10 episodes first because a lot of people submit their podcast to be featured when they're just starting. And then we check back a couple months later and they have one episode, two episodes, we check back a couple of months later and they've stopped podcasting. So um, it, it is a lot of work and I think people should go into it understanding that as well. Um, so I, I'd say the best formula is to talk about something that you're passionate about and that you really want to learn about so that when you're interviewing people, you're actually looking at it not just as a, hey, here's someone who can provide content for my podcast, but someone you actually really want to interview and, and learn from. And I think if you do that, then the audience will follow. If you're passionate about it, you'll keep doing it. And then eventually you'll kind of crack whatever the code is for you. However, if it's important for you to make money from the podcast, you'll find a way to do that. If it's more of a way to have stimulating conversations, you'll find a way to do that. Whatever it is that is best for you will follow if you are passionate about the topic and, and really commit to it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I feel the the best episodes that I've recorded have been definitely the ones where I've been just the most, you know, genuinely curious about the guest, you know, mm. and I think that definitely kind of, you know, shows the audience, you know, it gets reflected. Absolutely. I'm curious. So you alluded to, you know, monetization and obviously there's, you know, different ways that people use as far as you know, whether it be the ads or, or making kind of a course or ebook kind of out of the podcast or from that audience. I'm curious if you, you know, have any uh, recommendations or, or if you see it the same um, as the previous question where there's a lot of different routes and there's not really a, a certain blueprint. Right, right. So I, I guess I would, I would discourage people from thinking that they're going to make money from ads on the podcast. And some do, but most just don't get to be big enough. I mean, if you only have 100, 200 listeners each week, you're not going to get a direct advertising deal. You could do some affiliate stuff, but you're not going to get rich from it. And so I, I would encourage people to look at podcasting and the benefits they get in a couple of different ways. Um, one is that there, there are probably some people out there that you'd love to learn from or talk to. 
But if you just call them up and say, hey, can I have 30 minutes of your time? I want to learn about X, Y, Z from you. They might not respond. But if you call them up and say, hey, I'd love to have you on my podcast so you can share with my audience about X, Y, Z, then they're more likely to respond. And this could be someone that is, is in demand that, you know, if you otherwise just cold reached out to them, you wouldn't get a response from. And so I think that's one of the benefits of having a podcast. Another thing is to look at it from if you have a product or service that you are selling and using the podcast as a way to, uh, to bring more attention to that. So rather than saying, oh, I'm going to advertise another product on my podcast, uh, let's say you're a, a business consultant, you can use it as a way to build credibility. Uh, if you are, let's say you're, you're a mortgage broker. Well, um, bringing real estate agents onto your show to ask them, you know, what their craziest real estate stories are or what they are seeing in the market, you, you, you're getting something out of that, right? Not only is your audience learning something, but you're establishing better relationships with those real estate agents that are going to refer business to you in the future. And so I would think of it as more of kind of a one-to-one-to-many -one -to -many type thing rather than a one-to-many when it comes to, to monetizing a, a podcast. And, you know, there, there's a lot of value in a 200 listener show. If you have a couple hundred people that are listening every week, if you picture yourself in front of an auditorium of a couple hundred people every week, that's a pretty good opportunity, right? And so I just think if you're looking at it strictly from a numbers game, it's going to be very difficult, uh, very difficult to, to make work. Right. Understood. Well, what about, you know, a similar question uh, to when I asked you a couple times ago, as far as what makes a show great, but I'm curious also what makes an actual podcast or what, what skills or, or traits. Right. Well, I think first of all, there, there's the interviewer and in, in the podcast host, but there's also the technology behind it. And so there's some basic things that both podcast hosts and, and frankly, the guests need to do before doing either hosting a podcast or being a guest on the podcast. And that is you need to have a decent audio setup. And by decent, I don't mean you need to spend hundreds of dollars, but you, you need an external microphone of some sort, whether it's a, a headset or a snowball microphone that you can buy for $30, $40 something along those lines that just make it makes your voice sound deeper, richer, higher quality than speaking into the microphone on your laptop, which frankly can sound like a, a tin can. Um, and then one hack I tell people, you know, I'm to the point now where I have kind of a podcast studio where I've got some baffling and that sort of thing to, to keep the echo down. Um, but if you if you have a walk-in clothing closet, it's a great place to record. The clothes absorb your sound. Uh, it sounds like a great podcast uh, studio. I was listening to uh, Mike Berbiglia. He's a comedian, and he lives in New York City. So, of course, he has a, a kind of a small home, uh, an apartment. But his daughter, his daughter, I think is like five now, created a fort for him where he goes into it and does his podcast and absorbs all the sound. Um, and so, you know, there are a couple of kind of hacks around there, around the technology. Now, when it comes to the podcaster themselves, I think that it's a tough question. I'm not a perfect interviewer. I'm always learning. I've done hundreds of interviews as both a, a host and a guest, and I'm still learning. I think, frankly, if you listen to radio interviews, listen to like NPR interviews, not those not the political back and forth kind of ones, but ones where they really go in depth, like, like fresh air on, on NPR. It really helps you kind of understand how to be a good interviewer. And that is that you want to listen more than you speak and you want to prompt more than ask. So obviously, you know, one thing you don't want to ask yes and no questions, right? Close into questions because, Depending on your guest, you might ask a question that you'll think they'll answer for five minutes and they just say yes, no, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. So you, you want to ask these questions that will evoke some sort of more in-depth response. Uh, so open-ended questions. Um, but you also, and, and this is something I hear, you're, you're actually quite good at this, but I found that when I'm being interviewed sometimes by someone uh, who is an expert in the same field, they want to get their point across. 
and you, you can do that to an extent, but if you're speaking half the time as a host, um, you might want to rethink that, right? It, it could work in some circumstances, but you might want to go back and listen to it and ask people, hey, do you feel like I'm talking too much? Do you feel like you're actually learning from the guest as opposed to hearing my opinion on things? And again, there's, there's no one size fits all depending on what you're doing. For, for sure, if you're doing a political debate show, throw that out the window. It's, it's different, right? Uh, but it, it really depends on, on what type of, of show you're putting on. But I'd also say, you know, practice makes perfect. And when you listen to some of these professional interviewers that have been doing it for thousands of interviews at this point, they've been doing it for decades, you're not going to be like that overnight. You might get to that point in decades after thousands of interviews. Um, but it's just go back and listen to yourself and see how you do and see how you can improve. I find when I go back and listen, I find the filler words that I use or certain mannerisms. And I'm not perfect again, but I try to work on that every single time I record, either as a host or as a guest. Got it. What about as far as, you know, podcasts that, you know, some are obviously, you know, very specific as far as someone, you know, has a specialized field and they mm. interview people from that field. But then, you know, on the other hand, you have shows like, you know, like Joe Rogan, very popular, you know, that seems like he's, you know, interviewing an astrophysicist one day and, you know, a musical artist. And I, like, what, I, I guess I'm asking, you know, what, uh, do you, do you recommend a certain, like picking a lane or just kind of having, uh, an eclectic mm. show? What's your take mm -hmm. on that? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I podcast about domain names, so I've clearly pick the lane. Uh, you know, it is a, it's, it's a niche and, you know, I can be a big fish in a small pond there. Um, when I started, there was, there was, there was a, a podcast slash great internet show about domain names, but there wasn't a, you know, there wasn't a lot of competition. More and more people are coming into it, but I think about it the same way as any other, you know, if, if you were starting a blog today about technology, it's a really broad topic. It's going to be hard for you to get eyeballs and to get, you know, any sort of exposure. But if you start a blog about a very specific technology topic like domain names, you can actually start to make a name for yourself fairly quickly. And so in general, unless you have this big generalized audience already, when you're going into podcasting, I'd say kind of be specific, pick a niche. And, and this goes, I say this to experts as well that want to get booked on podcasts. I tell them, pick something very specific. Very might be too strong of a word. Pick, pick something specific. If you are, say, a business consultant, there are millions of business consultants out there. If you are a business consultant to uh, pavement engineering companies, in the United States, well, that narrows it down. And now you have people that are really interested. It's a much smaller audience. In fact, that one might be too small. I just pulled it out because I know a pavement engineer, but um, you know, it's more specific and people, you can be a big fish in a small pond instead of a small fish in a big pond trying to make a name for yourself. And it's really hard to make a name for yourself when you jump into those big ponds. You, you almost have to have that audience already that you've developed over the years. Right. Switching gears a little bit, I want to find out from you. Well, first, I'm curious, have you read uh, Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss? Uh, Tools of Titans, did you yeah. say? Yeah. I, you know, I have. It's a big book. I've, it, I've selectively read it. Right. I believe I'm thinking of the right one where he's basically um, each couple like pages is kind of a, a yeah a different, a different interview uh, yeah a different interview and so I read that book and was really intrigued that was that was before I started the podcast but I'm I'm curious if that if you sort of see that model of basically you know turning basically you know his podcast into you know a book that sort of summarized the best kind of best of the different mm -hmm. interviews or guests uh, I'm just curious what what your take on that model and and also just generally like you know evolving the podcast into say an ebook or into a course just sure. kind of taking it different avenues. Right, I, I'm I'm a big fan of of using different media 
and, uh, you know, have a blog and a podcast. It's interesting. I'll go to an industry conference um, back when we could actually leave our house and go to conferences and um, someone will come up and they'll be like, hey, I love your podcast. And they don't even know I have a blog. And then other people will come up that love my blog, but don't listen to the podcast. And then others do both. And I think different people consume content in, in different ways. Uh, audio, spoken word audio is great content for a commute or a train ride um, or doing something where people need to pay attention with their eyes on something else, like they're mowing the lawn or lifting weights, and then they can listen to a podcast at the same time. They can't read a blog post. Um, I know a lot of people have turned blogs into books where they kind of take some of their blog posts and do it. So similar sort of concept. Um, you know, you can go vice versa on that too. Maybe you've done a lot of interviews or, or stories that you can turn into podcasts, uh, either guest format or not. So I guess the, the answer I would give is that by all means, go many different avenues when it comes to what kind of, of media you're putting out there, whether it's spoken word, whether it's video, whether it's written. I think it's important to realize that different people like different things. Um, like I tell you what, if, if, if I go to a site that wants me to watch a three minute video, I get annoyed and I'm like, just, just write it for me because I can scan that in 30 seconds, you know, these tutorials, but having the video there is good when I actually need to see screenshots or something like that. Um, so I, I think it's good to use a, a different mix. Right. What's your take and I'm, I'm assuming it's probably, you know, changes just over the years as far as, you know, say right now, what do you, what do you think as far as the best um, strategies or best uh, platforms to sort of advertise a podcast on? Is it with YouTube oh, yeah. advertising, Instagram advertising? I mean, yeah. I know there's other sites that, you know, will promote your podcast there seems to be a lot of different options and I'm curious if you have any uh, recommendations or favorites. I, I do. Um, so this, this is a common challenge for podcasters and it's one of the reasons a lot quit. And that is that growing a podcast audience isn't as simple as getting into the search engines. Like when you write a blog post or buying Google AdWords, there's no Google AdWords for, for podcasts. Um, there are actually some, some podcast apps like Overcast now sell advertising. Uh, and that's great because people that are listening to a podcast can literally just tap a button and subscribe if they see you know, yours and are interested in it. Um, but those are fairly expensive and limited. You know, they sell out of their ads and, and that sort of thing. So the bottom line is the best free way to expand your audience is to have good guests on your show and then be a guest on other shows. Because when you do that, you are getting in front of an audience that's already listening to podcasts. And so um, I, I'm on your show right now. I'm a podcaster. Someone listening might say, oh, domain names. That's actually kind of interesting. Let me go listen to the Domain Name Wire podcast. They already listen to podcasts, right? Whereas if you're advertising on uh, a, a a platform like an online platform like Facebook or, or Google, only 20% maybe of those people actually listen to podcasts and are interested. And then you're telling them to go open their podcast app and search to find your podcast and add it. So it's, it's difficult. Um, the other thing is to have good people on your podcast. And so once we're done with this podcast and you publish it, I'll, I'll do some social media around it. I'll include it in my newsletter that goes out to 20,000 plus people. And some of those people who are already in the podcast will say, oh, let me go check out that podcast. It sounds interesting. And some of them will subscribe, listen, download episodes, that sort of thing. So I would say the, the number one way to grow your show is to be a guest and have good guests on your show. Um, beyond that, I mean, I do do some Facebook advertising and you, know, you can target Facebook advertising to people that are on, say, an iPhone. So at least you know they're on a phone and not a desktop and they can open up their podcast app or, or click, or if they click through, it'll open up their Apple podcast app. Um, so things like that help. Uh, it really depends a lot on your budget. Um, you know, it's free to have good guests on your show. It's free to copy a guest on other shows and it's the most effective. So if you have the money to expand it, um, then I would start looking at some of that paid advertising. 
Got it. What about as far as kind of the best way, um, you know, to reach out to a guest, you know, speaking for my show, you know, what I usually do at the end of the show is, you know, mention that I'll send, you know, the YouTube link to the show after it's published, you know, and, and feel free to share it, you know, with your audience, whoever, whoever you'd like to share. But I'm just curious, you know, what sort of the best way is to, to make sure, you know, to try to get the, the guest to, to, as you're saying, you know, and I thank you for that, for, you know, sharing, uh, to share the episode, but how, what's, what are the best ways to, to sort of get them to actually do that? To get them to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I've seen some really great, I, I don't do follow best practices on this, but I've seen them. And after I'm on a podcast, someone will send me like a graphic that they've created just for the show. And they say, Hey, you can share this on social media or you tag the guest in social media so they can like it and share it more easily. But what you want to do is make it as easy as possible for them to share it. And then they're more likely to do it, right? They're busy. They've done the interview. Uh, they're kind of moving on. You want to make it as easy as possible for them by providing them the media that they can use to share it. Even, hey, here's a suggested tweet or Facebook post, that sort of thing. And, and be sure to follow up with them also afterwards. You know, if a couple of weeks after you publish this, I haven't promoted it on social media, I think it's perfectly fine for you to say, hey, Andrew, you know, you said you were going to promote this on social media. You know, can I help you? Is there a way I can make this easier? And odds are I've just forgotten if that's the case, right? I just overlooked it in my day. Um, one thing I do, and, and, and I can't take credit for this, um, on podcastguests.com, all the guests have uh, what's called a one sheet, which is kind of a pitch sheet for them. And one of the things I put on there is I ask them what they will do to promote the podcast they're on. And I added that after being, uh, I was having a conversation with someone at the South by Southwest uh, Festival and, and a conference and uh, at the technology segment and he was a podcaster and he's like, I get all these pitches that are like, I want to be on your show. Here's what you can do for me. And he said, as a podcaster, I want to know what you can do for me by being on my show. And so I, I added that into the one sheet where it's like, Hey, what specifically can you do or will you do? And some people just say, Oh, I'll promote it on social media, which, which is fine. But the ones that are more specific, I think get more invitations to come on their podcast. If they say, I'll include it in my email list to, you know, my 5,000, 10,000 emails and on Twitter and I have X followers and, and that sort of thing. The, the more specific you can be there, the more likely you will be to get invited on the shows. And another thing I'll say about this is sometimes the less famous guests are actually better at promoting. And so you can get this great guest on your show but as soon as the show is done, they are done with your show. They don't care. They're moving on. They've gotten what they needed. Uh, where some of the people that are um, hungrier, I guess, are more willing to, to do things to promote the show. So it may seem like getting a big whale to be a guest is a great thing. And it is uh, someone who has a, a big following. But that doesn't mean you should ignore uh, some of the, the less well-known guests that can actually put some elbow grease and we'll put the effort into promoting your show. The, the size of an audience or, or say, you know, subscribers, view counts. I've reached out to some people to, to get them on the podcast. Some of them don't care at all. They don't even ask, you know, they're, they're, you know, interested in, in just being on the show, mm -hmm. but then some of the more, I guess, uh, how do I describe them? You know, they already have sort of a media presence, you know, whether they've written books mm -hmm. or, you know, have a publicist. Those people seem to, to you know, care more about, you know, uh, you know, how many, how many people are you getting this out to? What's right, your, right. what's your, because we, we talked about earlier on how, you know, you can have a really effective show where it's just, you know, you mm -hmm. have a couple hundred, you know, people, subscribers or whatever listening. So what, what's, what's kind of your take on that? Yeah, my take as a guest is I'd rather speak to 200 targeted people than 10,000 untargeted people. Um, and so I think the numbers are just one part of that. Um, the other thing is that, uh, and I, I used to, when podcast guests first started out, I used to include how many downloads people got per episode. 
but then I figured out everyone just lies. <laughs> so <laughs> there was no way for me to verify it. So I, I stopped doing that. What I do publish is how many episodes they have published. And that, that's what I like to look at more. Um, just because my experience has been sometimes I'll, I'll do an interview with someone who's published five episodes and then they stop. And it's like, well, I spent an hour and yes, I knew they were small, but you know, I look at a small show as an opportunity to get in on the ground floor on a show that might take off and become popular. And then people go back and listen to the back episodes uh, and then they'll hear me. Um, but if the show stops publishing, then, you know, that's kind of a waste, right? So I like to look at how long it's been running and if the topic seems, um, seems relevant. And, you know, in, in some cases, there's a little bit of back and forth. Like I asked you, okay, it, am I going to be relevant to your audience? Because I, I don't want to bore them. And, you know, I don't want to talk about something too, if it's not going to be relevant to them. So, um, you know, I, I think it's more, I, I wouldn't dismiss podcasts out of hand because it's small or smaller than what you're looking for. And, um, you know, likewise, how the smaller guest or the less famous guest might promote your show more the host of the smaller podcast might do for do more for you as well as far as promoting the show that you're on. Interesting. I kind of want to also find out from you um, as far as, you know, when you're looking for a guest say, you know, what are there any characteristics of, of that person that, you know, cause sometimes I've had guests on the show that, you know, we just seem to have a great dynamic with the, the show flows really well. Um, other times, not so much. And there's, you know, there's the awkward pauses and you're both trying to talk at the same time. And, you know, obviously if, if I already know the person and we have a, you know, kind of a, a chemistry or we, we just kind of know each other, it, it tends to be easier. But I'm curious if there's anything else that, that you can sort of see that, that you think, oh, this person's going to be a good fit for my show. You know, I suspect that those people, you're, you're, you're framing it as dynamic, but I, I think you're probably being nice. I think it's probably guests that aren't very good. <laughs> um, and uh, in, I bet if you went back and listened to some of their other interviews, you'd find that that guest, that host was having the same issue with that guest where um, they were talking over each other or there were lots of awkward pauses and that sort of thing. So it, it, it might not be the dynamic so much as a guest that, that um, either doesn't have a lot of experience or they like to talk over people or you know something along those lines. And so I guess what I would encourage you to do is maybe listen to a few of their interviews. You don't have to listen to the entire thing, but I think you'll get a really good feel that's another thing that people should have on their one sheet if they don't uh, are links to some of their previous uh, episodes, guest appearances they've had. Um, if not, at least to, if they host a podcast, you can listen to that as well. And I think that will probably help with that issue. I'd also say the more experience people have on podcasts, the more guests, the more shows they've been guests on, the likelier they are that they'll be a, a good guest. Um, I, you know, th th this is a common frustration. And so, so I have some people that email me, Hey, I found this guest through service. I had them on and they didn't come prepared with an external mic or something like that. As the host, you need to prepare guests for that. You need to tell them what the technology is, um, what you expect of them. Um, but as a, you know, a good guest should know that too, or at least ask about it. Uh, I, I actually, I, I did put together a guide you can download it at podcastguests.com slash guide. And it's about how to be a good podcast guest, about how to get booked on shows, how to do a good job. It's very short. It's free. You don't even have to provide your email address or anything. But I, I kind of go through a checklist of being prepared, uh, having the right technology, understanding how the, the podcast will flow, that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, much like blogs, there's some good ones out there. There's some bad ones out there. Same thing with podcasts and, and guests as well. They're, they're good ones and, and bad ones. Um, I have heard from some people that record shows and they don't air them uh, because it just, they couldn't salvage it. I, I've done some where we had technical difficulties and we re-recorded um, rather than go bring out one that's, that's not very good. 
Awesome. Well, Andrew, does that answer your question? It does. It okay, does. Okay. And I know we're coming up onto the end of the show today, um, but I'm curious for our listeners uh, who enjoyed the show or who might, you know, want to get in contact with you or have more questions for you. Where would you Where would you direct them? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd invite everyone to check out podcastguests.com. It's plural with an S. Uh, it's a free service to sign up. Um, there are, as we mentioned earlier, some, some paid options you can upgrade to. But for most people, just signing up for the free service is a great start. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, try being a guest first on a few and, and see how much work that is because I guarantee you it's more work as the host when you have to edit it and do all the, the post-production work. So try being a guest. See if you like it before you start your own show. And uh, I, I, send, I send out all the weekly uh, lists from my own email address and people respond back with questions all the time so you can get in touch with me that way. Awesome. Well, and for our listeners, if you guys enjoyed the show today, go ahead and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, where Ross goes wetsuit. And you can also find audio versions of the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. So go ahead and check us out whatever way that you would like to. Andrew, again, I, I wanted to really thank you for your time and coming on the show and, and for providing podcast guests as a, you know, it's a great resource that has benefited me you know, a lot, as I mentioned to you before the show, but just wanted to thank oh, well, you again. My pleasure. Thanks a bunch for having me on. Absolutely.